Hello everyone, welcome back to the Home of Thoughts. Today, I'm telling the true story of how computer chips went from clunky beginnings to the brains of everything, and why countries argue about who gets the fastest ones. By the end, you'll know what a chip is, why it matters, and what's going on right now between the US, China, and NVIDIA. Let's dig deeper, one thought at a time. Imagine a city of tiny light switches, millions, then billions, turning on and off to do math. Early computers used hot glass tubes, Then the transistor showed up, cooler, smaller, faster. Pack lots of these on one slice of silicon and you get a chip. Keep shrinking things and boom, your phone becomes a supercomputer in your pocket. That always smaller, more powerful rhythm is what made the chip industry explode. As chips shrank, jobs split. Some companies design chips while a few ultra clean ultra-expensive factories build them for everyone. These factories, called foundries, are mostly in Taiwan and South Korea, and they use sci-fi tools like EUV lithography from Dutch company ASML to print circuits so tiny you can't see them with normal microscopes. This who builds what, where detail is why chips are a big geopolitical deal. Then came a twist. Chips meant for video games or GPUs turned out to be perfect for teaching AI. That's why everyone talks about NVIDIA. Its GPUs became the engine room for modern AI, from chatbots to self-driving research. For a long time, chips moved around the world pretty easily. Then AI took off, and that changed. The fastest chips started being treated as sensitive tech, not just regular gadgets. All right, here's a quick timeline, nice and simple. Let's rewind to October 2022. The US brings in big rules. Result? The top AI chips can't go to China. NVIDIA's highest end parts are in that bucket. October 2023. Rules tighten again to close loopholes. Even NVIDIA's four China versions, the A800 and the H800, get pulled into the restrictions. Now let's move on to 2025. Here's a twist. Back in April, Washington added a license requirement that basically pauses NVIDIA's H20 going to China. Translation, don't ship unless it's approved. NVIDIA says that could cost them billions. Now, let's move back to July and August. The US says some sales can restart with licenses, but adds a new condition. The government takes 15% of the revenue from those China sales, AMD2. Think of it like a bridge toll. Officials say the H20 is old enough to allow, but the truly cutting edge chips are still locked down. A few licenses exist, but that 15% piece is still being worked out, so shipments are slow. China's move. If your favorite cookie shop keeps closing early, you start baking your own. China is investing big in domestic AI chips, like Huawei's Ascend, and pushing companies to try local hardware. Just this week, Report said Alibaba, China's big e-commerce and cloud company, and Baidu, China's top search and AI lab, are training some models on their own chips, though they still like NVIDIA for the most demanding jobs. Meanwhile, the Netherlands has restricted ASML, think the only high-end chip printer maker, from sending or servicing some printers in China. You might have the blueprint, but without the printer, you can't even make the tiniest features. That's another layer on the chessboard. All right, big picture time. First, two tracks. Inside China, you'll see more homegrown chips, plus some licensed NVIDIA light chips when they're allowed. Outside China, the US and its allies are still sprinting to build the most advanced designs in the fastest factories. Second, prices and supply. When the rules change, Chips can get scarce in one place and expensive in another. 
That's why you hear about waiting lists and workaround. Third, the innovation tug of war. Controls are meant to slow military uses, but they also push others to invent alternatives faster. A lot of analysis think that the pressure is speeding up China's domestic push. And finally, careers. Whether you're into coding, hardware, material science, or international policy, chips sit right where science meets strategy. There's room for builders, designers, tool makers, and rule makers. Bottom line, tiny switches, giant consequences, and j- tons of ways for you to get involved. And that's our journey. From tiny switches on a silicon slice to a global power puzzle, science showed us how chips got smaller, faster, cheaper, and the geopolitics showed us who gets the fastest ones, when and why. If you remember just three things from today, one, a chip is a city of tiny switches called transistors. Two, making leading edge chips takes rare tools and a few super factories, so supply chains matter. Three, because AI runs on the best chips, rules and deals between countries can change what gets built and where. Now it's your turn to think big. If you were designing a chip for phones, what would you optimise? Speed, battery life or cost? Why? If you were in charge of a country, how would you balance sharing tech with keeping national security safe? What surprised you more? The science of squeezing billions of switches into a fingernail, or the politics of who's allowed to buy them? Tell us in the comments or send a voice note. We'll feature a few in the next episode. If this made you smarter today, follow or subscribe, tap the bell, and share this episode with one friend who loves tech or world news. Ratings and reviews help more curious minds find us. Thank you. I'm your name, and this was the back the home of thoughts. Stay curious, be kind, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.